All right, guys, so we're going to take a look at an application here, like a word problem, right, relative to the stuff that we've done up above here, right? So it's, it's, it's the exact same thing, right? The exception is we've always said in the real world, you know, functions that represent real world problems look a little bit more complicated than just your run-of-the-mill nice teaching functions that we use, right? And so you can see here that this, this, this particular question, you know, the approach is the exact same, but actually finding the derivative is a little bit trickier because there's a couple little tricks in it, right? Um, and you could do it one of two ways, okay? Uh, you could use quotient rule because it's setting up a function divided by a function sort of thing. What we're going to do here is I'll show you a little trick to navigate that as well, okay? So, but first things first, let's, what, what, what the, let's identify what the question is. Um, so a flu ep epidemic breaks out in Waterloo and the fraction of the population that is infected at, at time t in weeks is given by this function, right? Okay. So what is the largest fraction of the population that is infected during the first 10 weeks? Okay. So we're going to assume that t equals zero is when the epidemic st starts. Okay. And so here's what we're going to say. I'm just going to just for our purposes here for consistency's sake, we're going to write 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 10. There's our interval. Okay. So, let's do this tricky work with the um, derivative. And and what I would say is like I think that you don't need this either. The uh, the um, it all comes down to organization, I think, right? So, if we can take I'm going to rewrite f of t here for a second. Like, you could use quotient rule, but you could also rewrite this, right? And unless, unless I explicitly say derive this using quotient rule or derive this using product rule, right? You guys can manipulate what you see here. I don't say anything about what's going on here, right? So, you know, if you prefer one over the other, and so in some situations it might be better in the other, to do one over the other anyway, right? So what we say here is I could rewrite this f of t function as being 64 t multiplied by, right? I can multiply this by 8 plus t to the negative 3. Okay, I can bring that up to the numerator. Now, I, I just have a product rule, right? Well, product rule tells us to... Product rule tells us to derive the first one, the derivative of the, the first one, is 64 and multiply by the second one and then add you know the original uh, f of x function and then multiply that against the derivative of the second function that you see there well that's going to be this one's a little trickier right because this gets to what we were talking about yesterday we have like kind of a uh, chain rule inside of a product rule okay and so we're going to see okay well i'm going to multiply by negative three and then 8 plus t to the negative negative uh, negative 4 and then the multiply don't forget to multiply by the derivative of the inside of this which would just be 1 okay so got lucky there in that aspect okay now something interesting happens here okay you could expand this all out and I suppose uh, or write the uh, the uh, move things to the denominators and things, right? Which might actually help. Um, what I would say is though, right here, this is a little bit uh, requires some clever th thought. Okay, let's just look at what's common between each of these pieces, right? Well, look, I can take a sixty-four, I think, right? So let, let's take a 64. We're going to common factor a 64 out. Okay. And then here's where the trick is. We always can say um, remove the most number of something that you can, the greatest common factor, right? And so in this instance, um, 6, we can only remove... Um, Four or minus four a plus t's, right? Because that's that's smaller than the negative three, right? 
So why don't we just remove 8 plus t to the negative 4 and then write what's left. Okay, well, we're going to get um, on the inside, we're going to get 8 plus t right? minus what's left. Well, the only thing that's left really is the 3, the negative 3, and the t. So minus 3t. Okay, but we could simplify it, what's inside the square bracket there by saying, okay, well, f prime of t is going to equal 64. And then we could multiply by what's inside the bracket. Sorry, before I do that, I'm just going to tell you guys right off the top, I'm going to move this 8 plus t to the minus 4 into the denominator. So you're not confused as to where it went. Okay, and then we can say, okay, well, I can collect like terms here. I have a t minus 3t. Well, that's going to be 8 minus 2t. And there's our derivative function. Okay. Now, as we did above, set f prime of t equal to 0. So that's what we're going to do. 0 equals 64 times 8 minus 2t divided by 8 plus t to the 4. So the denominator is essentially useless because the, the 0 is going to consume it, right, when I multiply both sides by 8 plus t to the power of 4. Um, and so you're going to be left with this here, right? Well, it also turns out that the 64 is going to disappear, right, because if I divide both sides by 64, right, the 0 is going to consume that 64 as well. So what am I going to be left with? What am I going to be left with? 8 minus 2t equals 0. Right? Well, I can bring the, I can say 8 equals 2t, so t is going to equal 4. So we know something important is happening at t equals 4. Okay, so we're just going to check that, right? So we're going to do exactly what we did. We're going to plug in our interval 0, 4, and 10 and see what happens numerically, right? So if I were to plug in um, f at 4, I'm going to get uh, 64 times 4 over um, 8 plus 4 cubed, right? And if you were to do the math on that, it would spit out 4 over 27. Okay, and if we plugged in 0, we would get uh, we would get a 0, right? 0 over 8 cubed, so it, we're okay. It's, it's defined there, which is fine. Okay, we're going to get a 0. And then if I were to plug in 10, right? So f of 10, right, would equal 80 over... 729. Okay, this is just if you guys are doing plugging stuff in. I won't waste the time doing that. Okay, 80 over 729, right? We know something special is happening here, right? What is it? Well, let's let's evaluate. What is 4 divided by 27? Well, that's going to be 0 0.15, right? And this here is going to be 0 0.11, right? And if we were to think of these in percentages, that would be 15% and 11%, right? So we know right we know over this period of 10 weeks right that there is a maximum here right and we know that therefore the largest fraction of the population that will be infected is 4 over 27 or 15 percent during the first 10 weeks okay so that's that's an example you know we're going to be interested in um plotting these graphs you know uh, identifying uh, maximum and minimum values on particular intervals, but also some other things that we're going to look at uh, beginning next week. Um, this is a nice segue into 
um, optimization, right? Obviously, that's what we're going to do on Monday morning is look at the same, basically the same optimization problems that we saw in grade 10, but we're just going to apply our uh, horizontal tangent, so slope equals zero to that situation. You're going to see how much easier those questions are to solve as opposed to um, completing the square, right? But this would just be another example of, you know, along a particular interval that we're interested in, what are the maximum and minimum values, okay, that the graph actually takes or this function takes in that interval, okay? So that's it, guys. So uh, kind of a cool little application there, right? Um, and and it's interesting to see how we can take a derivative and and figure out what graphs are going to look like in a much more efficient way, and and be able to produce much more complicated graphs than um, the ways that we've shown in the past, right? It's but you still require some of that information to help you along the way. Okay, so that's kind of cool. All right. So let me know if you have any questions and uh, be happy to help.